Before I get started this morning, I just feel really impressed that we need to take just a few seconds this morning and be quiet and recognize where we are. You realize that the one we call Master floated this water. How many times he must have crossed this body. So this morning, before I, I go into this devotional message, I want to just take 30 seconds and let's all just be quiet for a minute and recognize where we're at. Can we do that for a minute? Dear Lord, we just thank you, God, that you've given us this opportunity. Lord, we thank you that you, you have allowed us to be in this place, that this is a divine appointment. God, I, I thank you that I know at some point you taught your disciples on this water. I know at some point you took time on a boat to speak to your disciples. And Lord, I thank you that you've given me this same opportunity. I've never been more humble than I am right now. I thank you, God. And I pray, Lord, that each and every person on this boat today will let it sink in the magnitude of where we're at. This great sea. Lord, that's not nearly as big as we, we thought. But it's such a special place because it was dear to you, Lord. We thank you for that opportunity. And I give you glory and praise. Amen. You know, pastor asked me um, a couple of weeks ago, told me, um, wanted me to speak on the Sea of Galilee. And we were in the gym when he told me, and immediately, a thought, immediately God spoke to me, and just the thought, peace be still, came to me. And you see this day, how we couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day than today, to be out on the water. The sun is shining, the, the water just has that, that faint, beautiful ripple across it where a gentle breeze is, is blowing across. And I can't think of any better time to talk about the peace that God has for us. The peace that Jesus put in my heart. Those of you who don't know me, before I came to Christ, I was a... Uh, the best way I could describe it is I was, I was kind of wild. I was always looking for trouble, looking for a fight, because I didn't have peace within my heart, and I didn't want anybody else to have peace either if I didn't have it. But when I gave my heart to Christ, there was a peace that came over me, and all those things that I used to want to do, not only did I not want to do it, I felt sorry for people who did, because they didn't understand it. This morning I want to look at a very famous passage that happened on the Sea of Galilee in Mark, the fourth chapter, starting in the 35th verse. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Anybody ever thought maybe <laughs> Jesus is asleep? <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord, do you not see what's going on? Lord, have you seen what's happening in our world today? Do you not know? 
Are you not paying attention, God? I know that in my life sometimes I get overwhelmed. I get angry even at the things I see. At how there's injustice. And, you know, I, I know we've probably all done this. God, how could you let that happen? But I, if I read a little further, it says, they went to him and they said, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I've asked that question before too. God, do you not see? I'm a sinking ship myself. If you don't intervene, God, something bad is going to happen. And I won't be blamed is what I usually say. I'm going to let somebody know. And I think it's an amazing thing what happened next. Then he arose. It doesn't say he jumped up and ran. It doesn't say he, he pushed in the side and, and took charge of the situation. It just says, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. You know, a lot of times we quote this, Peace, be still. And we don't realize that there's a comma after the word peace. A comma makes us pause. Peace, be still. Jesus didn't have to yell at the, at the storm. He simply had to speak. And in our own life, sometimes we expect God to yell and make this overwhelming, huge, miracle thing happen in our life when He's simply saying to us, Peace, be still. I think the most important part of the peace, be still message is the be still. You know, I'm busy all the time. My vocation is, uh, by day, is a busy job. And sometimes I forget to just be still and know that He's God. That He made that walk. And He created that hill. And those trees that are growing right over there, my God put those in place. And, and that blue sky, guess what? He formed that too. Everything that is, He spoke into existence. And though I'm overwhelmed sometimes, I understand that He's in control. I forget it every once in a while. But on this trip, I pray that we all understand that, you know what, whatever worry you got back home, whatever that thing is that, you know, for me, I've probably checked my email 25 times in the last three days because of work. I've never been away from work for more than two days. And when I'm even two days, I freak out a little bit. So I've checked. Is there anything going on? Is there anything I need to know? Is there anything I need to try to get in contact with somebody and fix? Knowing full well, there's really nothing I can do from here. It's crazy the things that we allow to overwhelm us sometimes. Jesus went on. It says, and when the wind ceased, and there was a, notice, a great calm great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You know, our God has done so much already in our lives. And as we leave this place, you know, I've, I've been to a lot of different countries and a lot of different places. I even had my aha moment. I don't know if I, if all you understand what that is. For me, it was something that God spoke to me. I was on the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and we were doing a safari. I just I'd been uh, able to go and minister um, in Kenya at a at a conference, and we were out on the Maasai Mara, and all these people were on one side of the truck. You know, they're in the big back of a truck, and they're looking at animals, lions. I don't even remember what the animals were because that wasn't important to me at this time. I looked the other way. And there were rolling hills and tall savanna grass that was just whipping in the wind. And the bluest sky I've ever seen. There wasn't a building. 
There wasn't anything except God's creation in front of me. And in that moment, I've shared this before, I could have fought every demon from hell. Because that was my aha moment. Aha, God. I know that I know that I know that you exist. I know that I know that I know that there was no great bang and cosmic boom. I know that you spoke this into existence. I know that you said, let there be, and it was. You know, oftentimes, we get overwhelmed by the things of our life. And God just wants you to know today to have peace. Be still. The word says, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who, is, who can this be? that even the wind and the sea obey him. He's the one that created the wind and the sea. You know, in the Beatitudes, in the sixth chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, Who of you, by worry, can add one cubit to your life? One version says, Who of you can add one day to your life? If God takes care of of the birds of the air, make sure they're fed, and make sure that they're taken care of, how much more will they take care of us? How much more will we take care of you? He said, notice the lilies, even Solomon in all his splendor, wasn't adorned like that. And he cares for you more than that. Now I don't know today, if you're worried about something, or if you're praying about something, but I know that God wanted me to just talk about his peace today. And understand this, that God's answer doesn't always come as fast as I want it to come. I've prayed for things to this day that still haven't come to pass. And as me and Miss Judy talked about yesterday, sometimes it's because I haven't been the one to move. You know, oftentimes we pray and say, God, I, I want to do this. I, I feel this in my heart. I want to. I want to. And God's saying, okay, I'm there. I got your back. But you got to take a step. You gotta make a move. I'm not gonna kick you out and throw you to the wolves. You gotta do it. But when you do, I'll be there. And I'm reminded also of, of Daniel, who had a disturbing dream that he couldn't understand. And he prayed, he said, God, I need the answers. I, I gotta, I gotta understand this thing. I need, I need. And he fasted and he prayed for 21 days. And when his answer came, Gabriel said, God heard your prayer as soon as you prayed. The answer was on the way. So, but I had to stop because the prince of Persia detained me and I had to call on Michael, the archangel, to come and help me. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know what that thing is. But I will tell you this. If you prayed it. And it's important to you. It's important to God. Sometimes our answers don't come as fast as we want. Because we're not ready for the answer yet. My kids ask for things all the time. They ask, they ask, I was talking to Miss Alana last night. They want a puppy. Now I don't know if they're not ready for it. Or daddy's not ready for it. But they ain't got that puppy yet. But one day, one day they will, when I think they're ready and can take care of it. Our God, our Father is no different. He watches out for us. And sometimes the things we ask for, we're not quite ready for. Yet. So, today, allow His peace to be still in your heart. Tap on the microphone up front. Remember there's a comma between peace and be still. Peace, be still. We move so fast sometimes. I was sharing with Josh last night, I said, man, the thing just seems to move slower here than it does back home. We're always so wound up. I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. Pastor and I and Josh were sitting on the back deck at the 
<coughs> hotel last night. People were there. It was 10.30 at night. Now just relax. Back home, I'd have to be in bed. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I gotta get up. I gotta go. I gotta go. I just relax. Take this all in. This place. This water where our master flows across. The amazing thing about that story, that peace be still story, is these people on the boat were not rookies. They were not amateurs. We know for a fact four of them were bona fide fishermen that had been on this water several times. Hundreds, thousands maybe. And this storm, there was something about it. It was big. There was something about this storm that they couldn't handle. Even in their vast experience, they couldn't handle it. But something that stands out to me is, is Jesus said to them, why did you, why were you afraid? You had the authority the whole time to take care of this situation. Why were you afraid? So today I'm going to close in prayer and I just want to tell you, don't be afraid of whatever the thing is. Don't be afraid that maybe I'm afraid God doesn't hear me. God hears you. God loves you. There's nothing that He won't do for His children. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we have to take that deep breath. And pause that 30 seconds to recognize what's going on around us. And maybe then, maybe in that be still moment, is when Jesus will whisper peace. And answer the prayer. Fix the problem. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so thankful that you gave me this opportunity. I'm so thankful, Lord, that from the moment I was asked to speak on this boat, you whispered in my ear and said, peace be still. God, I'm overwhelmed today. Fighting back emotion, Lord, over this place. This place, God, that I understand must have been so important to you. Because, God, you could have allowed your son to be born anywhere on this planet and to live anywhere on this planet. But it was here. Among fishermen, among tax collectors, doctors, common people. <coughs> and it was here that you chose to change the world. And it's here that you have allowed me to come. If only for a moment. And to be still. Now Lord, for each and every person on this boat today, I, I don't know where they're at in their life. I don't know all of their backgrounds. But I do know this. They all recognize you, Jesus. As the one true Messiah. Lord, your word says that anything we ask in your name, you're faithful. Lord, and I pray right now that no matter what's being prayed, no matter what's on each person's heart, no matter that place they're in, God, that you would give them peace and let them know that just because the answer's not there yet doesn't mean it's not on the way. We thank you, God. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the blood of your precious son, Jesus.